Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and um, very good morning. So we stop somewhere in uh, Batik. Today we're going to do some uh, exercises with regards to uh, Batik loading. I think we stop somewhere here. So, <clears throat> recap as a recap back, uh, fatigue typically starts by typically fatigue uh, happens to ductile and brittle materials, uh, both ductile and brittle materials. However, the common uh, common indicator something is going to fail due to fatigue is when you can detect some sort of crack on the structure itself. So if you look at the cross section of the uh, pale region, you're going to see all these marks, which if you were to zoom in under uh, very, very powerful microscopes, you're going to see all these cracks uh, propagating along the cross section. So this is the cross section where the crack is going to propagate. Nah. So the uh, crack growth is very, very small, up to 10 to the power of 9. So this is very, very minute, nah. around nano, this is nanometer already, yeah. 10 to the power of negative 9. And eventually those cracks grow and they will come to a point where it cannot sustain anymore. So you're going to see catastrophic rupture. So these are some of the uh, parts which is failing due to fatigue. So some of the uh, things that we can do in order to reduce fatigue problems is that we have to make sure we do not have any area which has uh, stress concentration, high stress concentration. For example, if you see corners here, so this corner is very bad for your stress. If you were to crack certain things, this is where the fail part is going to start, nah? going to crack somewhere like that. So things like this you want to avoid. It's better to design it to have certain chamfers or certain radiuses, and sometimes you create some sort of recess. And uh, same goes to uh, parts like this. This is a threaded joint. So at the threads, you do not have, a, you do not want a sudden transition from the thread and then to the main thing. So you want to have a gradual transition to a change diameter. So ini dia punya minor diameter dia kan dia kecil. So something much much better is something like this lah. This is much better way to design a threaded joint. This one is uh, under bending. Kalau kita bend macam ni kan, you're going to have a moment like that. This is uh, not so good. You might want to release that stress this at this area by creating some sort of notch. Or you want to create a notch this way. So certain things like this, you can check if you are doing your design and you're doing FEA. Kan, kamu buat FEA, kamu akan nampak. Lots of areas where you have a high stress concentration factor, you might want to improve on that area. Other things is uh, on keyways, people do drill holes beside their keyways to alleviate their stress at that particular area. So, sekarang kita jumpa ni. This is something called uh, KT. KT stands for stress concentration. So, kalau kita ada satu uh, plate, you have a plate like this. And uh, if you introduce a hole, kamu letak lubang kat sini kan? You are going to increase the stress 
at the area where you have the hole. So dekat sini, dia lebih kurang tiga kali ganda stress dia. The moment you put a circular hole. So you can imagine if you put a rectangular window hole like that. Something like this, you are going to get a much higher stress at the corner. Even a circle also will increase it by 3x, 3 times. So certain things like this, you can uh, find out what is the stress concentration factor dengan mengambil maximum bahagi nominal stress. So KT uh, at this particular area is roughly about 3. Yeah. So this one, uh, This is a graph, and this graph looks at uh, one plate. So this plate is uh, roughly has a center hole. So something like this, you can uh, really find out berapa dia punya uh, stress concentration factor. This one K. So K or K T lah, stress concentration factor. This one, uh, this value is in the x-axis, the other R over D. So R over D stands for this radius divided by D, lah, this value. Uh. And then kamu boleh cari lah berapa. So kita uh, check tengok, maybe we can uh, read the table properly. Let's check. Let's say I have a hole. Let's say my dimension here is, let's say, 200 mm. This whole diameter, let's say this diameter is uh, 75 mm. So, stress yang kamu letak dekat plate ni, let's say you are putting a stress of, stress is equivalent to 200 Mega Pascal. Kata lah kamu ada plate macam ni kan. Tebal dia 200. Ataupun lebar dia 200 mm. You introduce a hole of 75 mm. Kamu tak ada FEA tu lah. Right. This is uh, in the old days right. You don't have FEA. You have to rely a lot on experiments. On manual calculation. And people do use all these uh, tables lah. To find out what is the highest stress. Especially the card in the corner. Ah, cuba baca tengok graf ni. Can you read what is the value of KT? KT berapa? KT is the stress concentration factor. Currently, uh, pressure ataupun stress yang kita apply dekat dia adalah 200 megapascal. Apa dia? Ini adalah nominal. Uh, ini adalah nominal. Nominal. Maximum tak tahu. Maximum kena kali dengan stress concentration factor. How do you find that out? Look at the geometry and baca table ni lah. Boleh ambil jawab. Nak ambil kan? Dia adalah R kecil bagi D kecil. What is R? So this symbol here is actually a symbol of a diameter. Eh? Diameter. Diameter is 75. Huh? So it's very easy. 
you just have to look at the x axis. It's only r over d. What is the value of r? Huh? Your 37.5. What is the value of d? D. It is a d, eh? Half d. Half d. Ini 200 mm. Ini lah ni. Ini 200. Ini 75. So you have a balance of one, two, five, right? So in half D, in half D. So D is one, two, five, lah kan? So yeah. So we're not looking for half D. We're looking of D. Ini apa jawapannya? Hmm? 0 0.3 so 0 0.3 so you are looking at here lah so roughly dia punya stress dia akan meningkat 2 point apa 2.34 maybe even though your nominal stress is 200, bila ada corner je, kali. 200 kali 2.34. Ini kan, maximum ni kan? 468 megapascal. So, we gotta be careful when you are putting all this geometric features in your design or in your components. So those days, we don't have uh, finite element tools to calculate all these stresses. Kita kena tengok table-table macam ni. Table-table ni siapa buat? Scientists yang buat lah. Dia memang buat dalam experimental lab and then they really study it and then they derive this table lah. So if you were going to do your final element analysis, you want to compare to something which is proven. Uh, tengok macam ni lah. Ya. Uh, ini benda-benda yang proven experimentally. Patutnya kalau kamu buat FEA pun, kamu akan nampak dekat sini akan meningkat lah. Kalau kamu buat ni, FEA ni, this, this particular part. Roughly you're going to get about 468. So, Memang penting lah benda-benda ni. That's why you do not want to introduce all these sharp, sharp corners. They are bad for you. Why they are bad? The crack is going to start from there. Once it starts, your structure is going to fail eventually. So you don't want to design something that fails prematurely, right? Kalau kamu beli kereta, Tiba-tiba pakai tiga tahun, apa benda yang rosak yang kamu tak boleh terima? Engine besar sangat, apa benda? Too many things yang go wrong with an engine. Gearbox pong, ya. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Looking at components. Certain things you, you cannot accept lah. Maybe you cannot accept your... Lower arm dah patah, tak boleh accept lah. Itu memang tak boleh accept lah. Ataupun kamu punya door hinge. Door hinge dah, dah bengkok lah. Itu memang tak boleh accept. Certain things yang uh, boleh rosak kan. Tire, brake packs. Uh, Benda-benda tu memang uh, for you to service kan. That one is okay lah. 
totally acceptable. But if you have this really, really main thing, and it's already uh, deformed beyond uh, original shape, and then one you cannot accept. So that's why you got to design properly now your components in order to last very long. So that's why we have to design your component to achieve something called infinite life. Infinite life means forever. So forever in uh, engineering is typically any 10 to the power of six. Meaning one million cycles. So typically in engineering, kalau that component can uh, last about one million cycle, then it should be good enough to say that it has an infinite life. Benda-benda yang tahan forever. Satu benda yang rosak, macam kata kamu bawa gear manual kan, kamu punya gear stick tu patah. Totally not acceptable. Apa any brackets inside there patah. Not acceptable. So how to achieve uh, infinite life? You have to design it in such a way that uh, it is lower than your something called endurance stress or endurance limit. So contohnya komponen ni, if you look here, kalau kamu design dia 50 megapas, uh, ni, kpsi lah, kilo pound square inch. Kalau kamu design dia 50 kilo pound square inch, dia memang infinite life. Kalau kamu design dia 100 kilo pound square inch, tarik sini, life dia cuma tahan banyak tu je lah. Banyak tu tu berapa? Dia adalah menggunakan log, log, log punya scale. So ini lebih kurang 0.5 kot lah, no? separuh kan? Itu ya? So kamu katakan log negatif 1, 0.5. Dapat berapa? Separuh. Tiga, empat, lima. Inverse log. <laughs> Dia ada log lagi satu. Shift log lah. Point five. Kan? Tiga point satu. Enam. Boleh? So value kat sini adalah 3.16 kali 10 kuasa 2. Boleh tak? Boleh terima. 3.16 kali 10 kuasa 2. Sebab kita follow yang ni. 10 kuasa 2. So 10 kuasa 2 ni 100 kan? Ini 316 316 cycle. So, katalah dia betul-betul uh, hujung kat sini. Ha sini. Apa nampak kah? Betul-betul hujung. Katalah dapat 0.95 Okey lah nak rapat lagi eh. 0.99 Ujung kat situ Hampir kepada 10 kuasa 3 Tapi belum 0.99 So kamu log Log negatif 1 Dapat berapa? Dapat? 9.77 Darab 10 kuasa 10 kuasa 2 dia hampir 10 kuasa 3 lah. Ini lebih kurang 10 kan? Lebih kurang 10 darab 10 kuasa 2. Sama dengan 10 kuasa 3 lah. So log dia macam tu. 
Kalau kita tak plot ni long, uh, kita punya graph tak cukup. Dia akan jadi panjang berjebar sampai ke hujung sana. Terpaksa kita lockkan ya. Baru graph tu boleh masuk dalam buku kamu. Kita tak boleh masuk lah. Kalau nak pakai linear kan. Dia tidak akan jadi straight line juga. Dia akan jadi macam tu. Lock punya lock punya style lah. So luckily we, we lock it. So the point is you want to design everything to achieve uh, endurance limit ataupun lower. The lower better lah. If you design above your endurance limit, it's going to fail somewhere. Tapi berapa cycle dia fail, tak tahu. Apa boleh kira lah. Oh, inilah kita kira-kira ni kan. <laughs> so this is the cycles lah. So contohnya, katalah kamu design uh, uh, bracket untuk pintu kereta. Tengah-tengah ni saya rasa ada pin pun lah, tak tahu lah. Kata hinge. Hinge door bracket for a car. Kamu nak design ni tahan berapa lama? Infinite life. So infinite life at least katalah 20 years. Boleh lah. 20 years ke boleh lah. So 20 tahun. Sehari orang buka tutup pintu berapa kali? Buka tutup, buka tutup. Kalau grab lah paling teruk no. Lima puluh passenger. Buka tutup jadi seratus lah. Betul eh? tak? So kali seratus. Lepas tu kena kali lagi. Tiga ratus ya, enam puluh lima hari. Betul tak? Eh? Ha, berapa ni semua? Hundred X. 365 days. Ha, banyak. Tiga. Ha, kali kali. Tiga puluh tiga ribu lima ratus. Tiga puluh enam ribu lima ratus cycles. At least. So when you design. Kena make sure at least uh, 36k. Nah, kita bulatkan lah bagi besar sikit. Eh. 40k cycles. Ha, tengok balik yang tadi. Material punya data kamu tu. 40k cycle kat mana? 10 kuasa 3 lah. 4 darab 10 kuasa 3. Log 4 lah. So, ni 0.6 lah. Roughly around here kot. Betul tak? Kamu tengah log 4 lah. Eh? Apa-apa? Lock 4 uh, Bukan lock 4 darat 10 kuasa 3 Lock 4 je Sebab kita nak tengok 10 kuasa 3 dah ha, So dia akan dapat 0.6 kan So roughly orang 0.6 lah So roughly macam ni Ini 50, 60, 70, 80 At least 80 Ini unit KPSI lah Kalau unit megapascal ha, Unit megapascal lah So ingat balik, selalu material kalau statik kan, failure dia lebih kurang 240 megapascal. Tinggi kan? Tapi fatik sikit pun dah boleh efek kan. Kadang-kadang 240 megapascal kalau yield stress statik. Kalau ikut uh, fatik dia ada cyclic loading tu kan. Kadang-kadang dia punya amplitude ni 40 ya. 40 pun dah efek tinggi ni. Terhadap dia punya life. So, cycle loading memang susah sikit. Kena ada factor of safety yang lebih tinggi. So, later on we'll calculate more detail lah. 
So if you want to look at a proper one, this is one example. This is a data for, for example, this one, like aluminium 2024. Cuba kita baca tengok. Kalau aluminium 2024, kita run dia 250 megapascal. 250 megapascal ni apa? Stress amplitude. Maksudnya, kan dia naik turun, naik turun. Stress amplitude tu yang ni. Ha ni. Sigma A. Katalah stress amplitude kita run dia 250 megapascal. Ha, cuba kira, dia tahan berapa cycle? Menggunakan graf. Dua atau lima puluh. Tengah mana? Tengah. Tarik dia. Tarik. Tak, situ. Turun. Ha, situ. Berapa ni? Ini lebih kurang separuh. So, let's say it is 0 0.5. Kalau kamu ketekan kalkulator. Log negative 1, 0 0.5. Apa jawapan dia? 3.16. So, tengok 10 kuasa berapa ambil yang sebelum. So, 3.16 darab 10 kuasa 5. Apa? 3.16 dan 10 kuasa 5. 300k ya. 316k. 316k cycle. So kalau benda yang tak banyak cycle okey ah. Kalau kamu design let's say brick pedal orang. Dalam kereta kan ada brick pedal kan? So agak-agak ah. Tak mungkin kamu nak design brick pedal boleh bengkok, boleh patah yang tak boleh ah. Habislah reputation of that automotive manufacturer. So, this uh, data, which is the material data, is very hard to get. Why? Because the testing is very expensive. Macam mana lepas nak test benda ni? Kalau lah kamu sebagai scientist yang jaga material kan, kamu nak test benda ni macam mana? Kamu kena test sampai fail. Test sampai fail ambil data. Satu poin. Test sampai fail ambil data. Satu poin. Sampai fail, sampai fail. Maksudnya kamu letak 400. 400 uh, amplitude kan? Run berapa cycle. Lepas tu kena ada sensor untuk detect pula dia fail. Baru dah dapat satu data point. So fatigue data, sometimes you have to buy lah to get the uh, data macam ni, graph macam ni. Because uh, if you want to predict, uh, fatigue failure is very, very hard. Dia macam nak predict nombor ekor. Kamu ambil calculation yang very detail and very long. Kamu katalah buat prediction dapat uh, 235 ribu cycle. Katalah kamu test kan. Ini kamu punya prediction. Tiba-tiba dia fail. 335k. So ini kira okey lah ni. Walaupun dia lari banyak kan. Ini kira okey. Jangan dia fail dekat uh, 37,000. Ini dah lari dah nombor dia. Lari dah dia punya magnitude dia. So lah, kalau within this particular uh, lock zone ni okey lagi lah. Within this particular magnitude. Okay, so that is how we can uh, estimate the life. So all these mathematical uh, graphs and equation, 
we can simplify them and then we can use uh, curve fitting and the formula that we can use is something like this. Lah. SF ni adalah something called kinetic strength. A dan B ni dia punya constant lah. Kenapa kita nak pakai benda-benda uh, macam ni? Graf, uh, equation, equation macam ni. Kita pakai equation ni bila kita tidak ada graf. Maksudnya, kalau graf ni tak ada kan, kamu boleh guna equation sahajalah. Kalau dia bagi A berapa, B berapa. Tapi kalau ada graf, kita guna graf. Use a graph if you have the data. You will not make uh, too much mistake. Okay, so now let's do some calculation on how do we predict static loading. <laughs> let's look at this one. Exercise one. So a static test was conducted. The mean stress is 50 megapascal. Mean. Huh? Dia adalah uh, um, mean. Mean average. Lah. And then also amplitude is 225. Berapakah maximum stress dan minimum stress? Maksudnya hampa nak kena plot sendiri lah graf ni. Boleh lah hampa cari? Senang ni kan? Tengok pun boleh tahu kan? Formula dia ni. Kamu nak buat matematik pun boleh. Kamu nak agak-agak lukis graf pun boleh juga. Sebab min ni dia duduk tengah. Oh, try. Try to use these two formula. Formula ni dapat mana? Dapat daripada asai kita belajar awal-awal dulu. Mana ni? This one. We learn certain things. Benda yang paling penting is this one. Stress amplitude. Tapi kita nak tahu juga maksimum kat atas ni berapa? Minimum berapa? Min berapa? Min duduk tengah-tengah lah. Tengah-tengah. Tu ya, min duduk tengah-tengah. Lepas tu kalau hampa tahu amplitude berapa, perlu tambah lah kan? Okay. So this is how it looks like lah. Min tengah-tengah. Formula untuk min adalah this one lah. Sigma max campur sigma minimum bahagi dua. So, mari kita cuba. So, let's plug in. Sigma min. 50. Sigma max. Tak tahu. Campur. Sigma minimum. Bagi dua. So ni dapatlah kan? 100 sama dengan sigma max campur sigma minimum. Amplitude pula. 225 sama dengan sigma max tolak sigma minimum 
bahagi dua. So, kali kan, buat pesanan kan. So, dapat uh, 4, 5, 0 sama dengan sigma max tolak sigma minimum. So, apa dapat dua, dua unknown, dua equation boleh masukkan lah. Masukkan in either one pun boleh. Okay. Kalau daripada sini, kamu akan dapat. Ya, yeah. boleh kat sini lah. Sigma max sama dengan 100 tolak sigma minimum. Lepas tu masukkan benda ni dalam dalam sini kan? Masuk sini. Ni. Ya. Sudah dapat? Sigma max sama dengan boleh maaf silap 450 sama dengan 100 tolak sigma minimum tolak sigma minimum so 450 ini bawa ke sana Dapat 350 sama dengan 2 negatif kan? Eh? 2 sigma min. Negatif 1, 7, 5. Itu minimum. Senang kan? Tapi lagi senang kalau hampa buat macam ni je. New screen. White screen. Sigma amplitude tadi berapa? 225 eh? Sigma min 50 Maksudnya kita punya curve tu Always following sinusoidal lah Tengah-tengah ni Mesti sama dengan sigma min Maksudnya sini 50 Amplitude pula 225 Maksudnya dia tambah sini 225 50 campur 225. Dapatlah max. 2, 7, 5. Lagi senang. Tak payah nak kira pelik-pelik tu kan. Ini pula. Jarak sini ke bawah. Sama juga. 225. Negatif 175. Ya. So now you're going to get negative 175 here. How do we get that? 50 minus 225. Dapatlah negatif 175 megapascal. So, saya, saya tak dapat ada kelahan itu. Saya tak lihat. Lepas tu saya tengok tim jalan tu Saya join tim tu. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so this one easier lah. Just baca aja, tambah-tambah tolak. Tak Now let's look at this. We have a cylindrical steel bar. Okay, cylinder. Undergoing repeated tension compression. Maksudnya dia tarik dan dia tolak lah. Tension compression lah. So ini cyclic loading lah. Berapa dia punya force? 22,000. 22 kilonewton. 
compute the minimum allowable bar diameter uh, B. So, berapa diameter? We're trying to find find diameter. To ensure that fatigue failure will not occur. Hmm, tidak fail. Assume a safety factor of 2.0. Maksudnya, kamu bila nak failure not occur, maksudnya endurance limit. Endurance limit. Bergantung kepada material, kamu nak pakai apa? Ini dia pakai ni, 1045. <coughs> so, 1045 still, ha, tengok curve dia. Which one? Berapakah endurance stress? Yang menyebabkan dia akan hidup selama-lamanya. Untuk 1045 steel. So, kalau duduk kat sini dia tak hidup selama-lamanya. Dia akan fail kan? Eh? Ini pun dia akan fail. Ini pun dia akan fail. Kita kena tengok ni, 10 kuasa 6, 1 juta cycle ke atas. So, patutnya dia akan hidup selama-lamanya kalau inilah. Ha, gitu. Kamu kena design banyak tu ya. Itu berapa lebih kurang? 310 mega pascal. Itu safety factor, safety factor is equivalent to one. Bukan factor, uh, factor of safety dua lagi ya. Eh. Kalau factor of safety sama dengan dua. Maksudnya 310 ni kena bahagi dua lagi. Maksudnya kamu lowerkan lagi. So kamu design 155 mega pascal sahaja. Oh, senang lah kan. Lepas tu cari lah. Kalau 22 kN, stress dia limited kepada 155 megapascal. Berapa diameter? Ini. Boleh tak cari? Ingat lagi, stress, force over area. So force is 22,000 about area by d squared over 4. Ini mesti sama dengan 155 megapascal. Pascal. 
Sebab kita pakai safety factor 2. Maksudnya maksimum stress kita kena bagi 2. So, cari berapakah diameter in millimeter berapa? Dua belas empat empat. So, kena check lah. Saya, saya tak buat pun ni. Everybody punch in your calculator. Berapa uh, maximum stress? Kalau kita pakai 1045 steel. Aluminium alloy ni. Dia tak, dia tak flat line lah. Dia tak flat line ni. Steel ni memang tak flat lah. Benda, benda macam ni we call it plato. Plato ni dia flat. Kita boleh anggap dia forever lah ni. Aluminium alloy ni dia tak flat line sangat. Dia kan fail juga somewhere. Ah, ha, tahan. Endurance challenge, dia tahan sampai bila. Tu so, janganlah design parati pula kan. Nah, design parati akan fail lah. Boleh kira pun bawa apa fail dia. Di mana dia akan fail, boleh kira. Betul ke ni? Anybody can uh, conquer this one? Masuk uh, formula lah. Betul? Sama? Okay. Alright. So, choose your uh, materials properly. Siapa yang nak terus saya tunjuk benda ni? Adakah? Ni bagi. Mak benda ni. How I escape this thing. My mom doing. <laughs> Tereng. Okay. Perlukah saya tulis ni? 22,000. So force over area. 22,000 bahagi pi d squared bahagi 4 sama dengan 155 darab 10 kuasa 6. Jangan lupa 10 kuasa 6. Eh, pi d squared over 4. Betul lah, pi d squared over 4 kan. So, bawa sana, bawa sini. 22,000 bahagi pi D squared. Berapa ulang balik eh? 155 darab 10 kuasa 6. Pi D squared over 4. One point four one nine. Four. Kali lah dengan empat kan. Lepas tu. Bahagi dengan pi. Punca kuasa dua kan. Orang dapat D. Saya root. Tekan ENG. Ya dapat. 13.44 mm. Ataupun kamu dapat 13.4410 to the power of negative 3. Apalah tu. Ya, 
Yes, meter. Kamu akan dapat uh, 0.013. Kamu tekan kereta misalnya maksudnya 0.013. Oh, oh. This one is in meter. Don't forget. Okay, senang eh? Yes, mega pascal. Sebab unit dia ni, uh, mega pascal. Paksi uh, Y is in mega pascal. Another thing that we need to know, there are a lot of possibilities when you are predicting uh, fatigue failure. Berapa banyak dia punya apa pemboleh ubah constants sangat banyak. Antaranya adalah Ka surface condition boleh mengubahkan fatigue life. A size modification factor Kb. Load modification factor. Load ni tengok pula. Bending ka, axial ka, torsion ka. Uh, what else? Surface condition. Uh, machining dia macam mana? Machining dia grinding, machining dia mesin ataupun hot roll. Lepas tu ada pula temperature. Kalau kamu tinggikan temperature, dia ada factor kan lagi. Kalau 600 degree Celsius boleh kurang sampai separuh lah. Kamu punya fatigue loading. Kalau temperature kamu room temperature dia anggap sebagai 1.0 lah. So benda panas lagi cepat fail. Roughly lebih kurang separuh. So other than that reliability factor. Reliability factor ni ikut uh, statistical reliability factor bila manufacturing tu lah. Miscellaneous effect and then rotary beam and then geometric pun ada. So sebab tu lah fatigue failure ni nak predict memang sangat susah. Kamu boleh predict in a very ideal condition. Bila go reality, sebab tu kita go tangan dua kali ganda lah safety factor tu. You get quite high. And then dia bergantung juga dengan uh, kamu punya finishing. Ini contoh uh, rod steel. Rod steel ni adalah besi yang kita ketuk lah. Forging. Macam apa nak buat spana kan. Apa kena forging dia dekat kurung buat pedang. Kamu ketuk dia. Forging. So once besi tu dah siap, apa finishing dia. Contohnya apa finishing pakai polishing. Polishing dia uh, tensile strength, endurance limit. Boleh tahan sampai banyak ni lah. Katalah tensile strength seribu lah. Katalah kita tengok material tu tensile strength dia seribu. Tapi finishing dia pakai polishing. Maksudnya dia boleh tahan sampai lima waktu. Berbanding kamu tak buat apa-apa finishing proses. Itu forging saja. Meaning, selepas kena forging, kena ketuk kan? Keluar, oh, itu je lah. Surface dia sangat kasar. So, bila sangat kasar, dia senang nak crack. So, hampa nak bagi tahan lagi, hampa polishing. So, polishing bagi molly, uh, nice surface finish. It might double or triple. Kamu punya endurance limit. Kalau kita machining sahaja, so kita tengok line ni ya, line ni, ini hot roll, ini. Kalau kita machining, CNC machining, for example, dia boleh tahan uh, lebih kurang 350. And then there's another process, something called grinding. Dia tulis ground lah, grinding punya proses kan, machine grinding tu. Dia boleh tahan up until 450. Hmm, 450. Kalau kita polishing very smooth and shiny itu memang susah nak ada crack lah. So fatigue ni memang ada yang feel melalui crack sahaja. So it's going to last very long. 500 megapascal pun dia boleh tahan forever. Meaning endurance limit lah. 
can last satu darab sepuluh kos enam cycle. So, tengoklah kamu punya components and parts macam mana finishing dia memang ada effect. So, other than that, we can also follow failure criterion. So, failure criterion is following uh, this uh, few scientists. For example, you can follow Goodman line or Soderberg line ataupun Gerber. Gerber dia punya failure dia adalah parabola. Maksudnya besar sekian. Maksudnya dia lebih banyak percaya lah. Uh, Goodman dia punya failure dia straight line. And then Soderberg dia fail. Very straight lah. Kecil je. Maksudnya katalah saya ada, uh, punya material ada dekat sini. A. A ni cuma pas apa dia. A cuma pas Gerber. Dia fail. Uh, Goodman dia fail. Dia duduk luar daripada line Goodman. And dia fail juga Soderberg. Kalau B kat sini. Dia pas Gerber, pas Goodman. Tapi Soderberg dia fail. Kalau C kat sini. Uh, pas Gerber, pas Goodman, pas Soderberg. Cuma dia pas semua lah. Sebab dia masuk dalam line kan. Dia macam failure criteria dulu lah. So these are some of the formulas yang Soderberg guna. SA amplitude, SE endurance, SY yield stress, SM mean stress, average stress. Uh, this is some of the formulas. The relationship is equal to one. So dia bagi bahan banyak benda kan, dia akan tutup lah satu benda. Contohnya, uh, kalau kamu tahu ultimate stress semua, dia tahan berapa stress amplitude. Dia mesti bagi tiga benda lah. Bagi tiga benda, satu benda tak tahu. Kamu boleh kira lah macam tu. So you can use Soderberg, Goodman or Gerber failure criteria. Kalau tak ada graph. Kalau ada graph, always use your graph. Ni kan. Graph ni lagi accurate. Kalau tak ada graph, pakai Soderberg, pakai Gerber punya line semua tu. Tapi kalau ada graf ini lebih bagus, lebih accurate sebab ini experimental lepas buat. Ini, this is the best. Cuma tak, dia pun tak mampu lah nak test semua benda kan. This test is very, very expensive. Unless kamu punya company pakai satu material tu je. Memang kena test extensively lah. So depend on your application also. Hmm. Ada problem pun lebih kurang. Hmm. <coughs> Ini kalau nak buat kena pakai Excel. You can test at your home. Macam mana nak buat graf? Uh, graf log. Log skill. Okay, so buat lah. <coughs> Have you guys ever done this? Nah, kan. Right click sahaja lah dekat Excel. Excel pun boleh pakai tak? Ha? Boleh kan? So ini is just uh, asking you to plot S and plot. Di mana? S and curve. Ini stress. Ini cycles. Stress apa? Typically stress amplitude. So baca dia macam tu, macam tu, macam tu, dia akan flat line, plateau. Ini apa? Stress endurance. Typically sini satu darab sepuluh kuasa enam. So selamat dalam fatigue punya problems kena sama dengan ataupun kurang daripada endurance stress. Ini kita lebih banyak kali ya. Hmm. 
Okay, kita break uh, dua tiga minit sekejap, saya kita sambung ni. Let me open up.
All right. Okay, so let's do this final example. So obviously you cannot copy the graph, huh? so graph is sketch. So we have a problem here. Currently, we have a component made by aluminum 6061, T6. So 6061, inilah the lowest one. Kita run dia multiple uh, stresses, stress amplitude. 300 megapascal, kita run dia 100 cycle. Berapa balance life dia ada lagi? Macam mana? Cari? Hmm? So dia ada multiple Mula-mula dia run 300 megapascal 100 cycle Lepas tu 250 megapascal 2000 cycles Finally Kalau run 200 megapascal Berapa cycle lagi dia ada Boleh hidup So kita buat one by one Ini dulu. So, 300 megapascal. Very clear cut, you can read that, right? Three hundred. It's here. Kalau 300 kamu run, patutnya kita boleh hidup sampai Ini kot. Berapa tu kan? Kosong poin tak berapa. Baca tengok log scale lah remember. Bukan linear scale, it's a log scale. Ini berapa? Katalah lebih kurang 0.7 So, the first one 300 megapascal Kamu dapat 0.7 So, kamu masukkan log scale lah Negative 1, 0.7. Berapa? Ha? Huh? 5.01. So, dapat 5.01. Darab 10 kuasa 100 ni kan? So, 100 ni 10 kuasa 2 lah. So, uh, teng teng, dia boleh hidup 501. Tapi kita dah run 100. Maksudnya life dia ada berapa lagi? Uh, so, roughly dia boleh hidup lebih kurang 100 bahagi 501. 1 bahagi 5. 0.2 life dia sudah habis. Live uh, consume. So balance dia ada lagi 0.8 lah. Nah ini tu part number one. How about part number two? Dia run 250 megapascal.
So 250 separuh lah. Roughly here. If I take it here, probably somewhere around here. Take it down. Probably got to do a, a new color. 250 is here. All the way down here. Zero point. The base for now zero point lima lima or the ground. So again, log negative one zero point five five. Ah, so dapat tiga point lima sepuluh kuasa tiga. Maksudnya dia perlu hidup tiga ribu lima ratus cycle. Tapi dia run dua ribu lah. So, 2,000 bahagi. Lama. What is this? How do I escape this one? Escape. Ah, uh, I cannot. Dua ribu bahagi tiga lima kosong kosong ni. Kosong point enam. Kosong point enam. Consume. Kosong point enam dan. So kosong point enam sampai kosong point dua. Kosong point lapan dah habis hayat dia. So kamu cuma ada zero point tu saja lagi. 0.2 daripada 200 megapascal. Tengok pula, 200 megapascal dia boleh hidup berapa? 200 megapascal sini. Sini. Tarik. Sampai 4 lah kot. Hmm. 0.4. Dua puluh lima eh. Log negative one. Zero point four. Dua point. Two point five. Harap. Sepuluh kos empat. Dua puluh lima ribu eh. Tapi dia cuma boleh hidup 20% daripada 25,000. Uh, so, kali 0.2 lah. So, roughly dia boleh tahan lagi 5K cycle je. Roughly. So if you have multiple stresses on the same component, it will behave somewhat like this. Huh? This is how you estimate uh, the life balance. Okay. Ah, we take full 100 percent lah. One.
Okay, let's take a look at this. Ini tak nak kira apa kot. Ada tiga specimen. A, B, C. Everything is subjected to uh, maximum stress berapa, minimum stress berapa. Okay, apa boleh nak? Ha, rank the fatigue lifetime. Mana yang tahan sekali? Tiga specimen. Maksudnya same material lah. Same material. Same component. Different. Different apa? Stress apa? Ha. Apa benda yang penting bila kita nak baca fatigue loading? Is it mean stress? Maximum? Mean, minimum? Or amplitude? Stress max. So yang penting adalah kita tengok balik kita punya soalan jawab uh, graf kita. Tapi yang penting adalah this one. Stress amplitude. Kamu mungkin ada maksimum yang tinggi tapi dia punya amplitude kecil. Ya, saya letak dekat satu screen yang ini kata graf kamu kan. Ini Oh, ini. Berbanding dengan Lemok Berbanding dengan Tak beza pun ha. Ini stress max dia tinggi ni oh, ini. Stress max dia katalah lah 500 eh. Ini stress max dia mungkin 200 eh. Ini stress max dia mungkin 300. So tak tentu. Stress minimum. Mungkin dia ni 300. Ini stress minimum dia negatif tu. So yang paling banyak dia punya ni. Amplitude dia. Typically kita tengok dia punya stress amplitude. Ini, ini lebih severe lagi. Ini Mungkin amplitude dia kecil je Walaupun stress maximum dia tinggi kan ha, Sekarang kita boleh baca dah Apa benda dia nak ni This one This one We have to find out what is stress amplitude ha, Cari <coughs> Apakah formula sigma A sama dengan sigma max minus sigma minimum divided by 2. Ha, A berapa? Specimen A. 400. 50. 
B350 3440 Oh macam mana ni? <laughs> Good Betul Oh, jilat tengok ada negatif. So, highest stress amplitude is specimen A. Second highest is specimen B. Finally, the last one. Tapi dia kata longest to shortest kan? Maksudnya, C dulu. B dulu bawa A. A yang paling teruk. Ha, ni lah ranking ni kan. C, B, A. Longest to shortest maksudnya stress dia paling kecil lah. Dia boleh hidup lama. Kalau stress dia tinggi, dia hidup saat dah. Kalau kita baca soalan yang betul-betul kan. Ah, lifetime dia very long so, Jadi A tu lifetime pendek ke? Macam mana? Apa dia? A tu kira lifetime pendek ke apa? Yes, A ni pal paling pendek lifetime Sebab dia punya amplitude terlalu besar Pak Arte Oh, amplitude Okay, okay, okay Okay, so that's all for uh, ini satu lagi ya. Eh. Ini uh, different mean stress. Ini mean stress zero. Mean stress zero maksudnya ya, betul betul itu. Tengah-tengah ni zero. Hmm. Kalau compression punya mean stress maksudnya negatif eh. Dia punya cycle to failure lagi. Dia boleh tahan lagi lama. Kalau mean stress dia tension. Dia tahan lagi sekejap. Saya rasa sebab itulah. Sebab kalau compress, compress tekan-tekan kan. Crack tu kurang lah nak mengembang. Kalau kita tension, tension, tension. Crack tu cepat berkembang. Sebab again. When we're talking about kinetic failure. It's going to fail. We are cracks. All these cracks. Kalau tension lagi lagi spread. teruk spread. Hmm, dia cepat spread dia dalam keadaan buka 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 dia tak tekan 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 ok so roughly that is what we learn on uh, static loading lah for today so tomorrow again uh, our class is online so minggu depan kita boleh buat test lah Design static, design fatigue. Satu soalan design static, satu design soalan design fatigue. Soalan macam mana? Yang macam dalam kelas lah. Hmm. Okay. Ha? Kenapa chapter berapa rasa? Ya, saya tak boleh. Itulah minggu lepas saya pergi KL. Tak tahu macam mana saya fikir ni. Okay. Cau buat online ni. Kita memang diawalkan seminggu ke cuti? Memang confirm ke tu? Jom minggu depan test lah tu.